But my hands are freezing. Are they? Absolutely freezing. Cold hands, warm heart. Well, you know, you know yeah. that, you know that, then, <laughs> isn't it? Are we going to go or what? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's rubbish, go on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday morning show. Good morning, Lester. Good morning, Dan. Now, this is going to be a tricky one moving forward. Sunday morning show. We are planning to continue with the Sunday morning show. I feel like we owe it to the people. 100%. And this is the people's YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely right. But the reason we are having a few issues is obviously we're moving into lockdown. England is moving into lockdown. So we are filming this slightly ahead of schedule so well, we will be with live. you this it's is not a live joke you know, I well, was this was but live. it was more we had to plan for the future and this and that because obviously with lockdown we were unable to get into a studio and do some filming so our plan moving forward is to get out into maybe a park yeah where lester and i can get together and do a little bit of filming filming on location exactly Cool. All right, so yeah. it will be only for a few weeks, but we got a lockdown for a month. What are you going to do? What are you going to do in lockdown? So while I'm in lockdown, so last lockdown was quite you difficult. You walked a lot. It was quite difficult for me. The first few weeks, or I quite enjoyed, and then I had a bit of a down period, I guess. I'm quite a positive person in life in yeah, general. But it, but I think it hit a lot of people. Yeah, I found it tough. I was on my own in a one bedroom flat. I'm not, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I know there's people in worse situations than me, um, but to sort of um, get myself going again. I just literally went walking. I, one of my friends lent me their puppy, so I had a puppy for about three, four weeks, which I basically walked yeah. 10, 12 miles a day. Nice. Which I really Guess what's open? open? Guess what is still open? b and Q. Is it? Um, yes. So I'm gonna get some serious jobs done around the house. Yeah. I'm not gonna film it though this time. No. No, I, no. Think, I think people got a bit fed up. We've got right? enough content anyway. We? Yeah, we've we got loads of content really, so. to get us through, certainly a yeah. month anyway. So um, we were a bit, We've been, it's been go time for us this week. We've yeah, been we've doing lots of filming. Yeah. We've been all over the place trying to get bits so, done for, for the month of so lockdown. So Monday we did, we did, we stayed at Torquay, did reviews. Yeah, so we've got we, lots of reviews coming lots out. Lots of reviews coming out. And then yeah. Tuesday, we had a great day Tuesday, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We had a fantastic day. We went up to yeah. Bowood on Tuesday and we went up, met up with a chap called Mike Brown. Now Mike Brown is a disabled golfer. He lost his leg, his left leg. Um, in, a, in an accident, he was in the army. Um, there's a, um, it was a purely an accident, he broke his leg and then he got infected and, and unfortunately he lost his leg. But golf saved him. You yeah. know, he got into golf, he's a professional golfer now. He got to number world number two yeah. um, in disabled golf. Played in, um, he's played in some big tournaments well, on the European tour. Yeah. Sort of, um, as, um, played with some great golfers. Yeah. But he was a um, really good guy, wasn't he? Really Fantastic. nice guy. And, and, um, that video will come out soon where me, Paul, Lester and Mike played around the back nine at Bowood and yeah. beautiful golf course, your oh, first yeah. time at Bowood. Thanks to, uh, obviously thanks to Ben as well who is... Yeah, Ben uh, Emerson. Yeah, he's yeah. left there now but he was um, the director of golf. Yeah, I, I think he's one of the pros there, yeah. One of the pros there, he's yeah. a really nice guy yeah. and made us feel welcome and Mike was, for me, a, like an inspiration really, just hearing his stories. Yeah. Um, and hearing what, where, he'd, where he'd been and where he is now and, you know, how he's sort of turned his life around, golf saved yeah, him as such. Absolutely right. Uh, just puts things into perspective, really. Like, any time, you know, you feel a little bit down or... Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, you know, it was quite yeah. a good thing for me to meet Mike and see him a few days before lockdown. Cause it just puts, like I said, it puts everything into yeah. perspective and, you know, it. if we've got to self-isolate and not work for a month or so, then... I've, you know, you, life it's just life, on, isn't it? Life you've got to look on. at the positive things and stay positive. Like, well, as long as you've got, you yeah. know, got a roof over your head and you've got food in the fridge and you've, you've got a mobile phone, you still talk yeah. to people. Um, it's well, not we, so bad, is it? I don't think. We got the connection with Mike through um, Bushnell, kind of Bushnell, with what, what we've been doing with Bushnell, and also um, a new company that we're going to be doing some uh, work with as well called Exclusive Golf and Travel. And they, they have got a release of a publication, online publication that's gonna be coming out in November, but there's gonna be a big interview with us in there. And then there's gonna be an interview with Mike as well. And it's an amazing story. And if you get the chance, I will put a link 
in the description and there'll be a bit more of it moving forward but a link in the description heading taking you over to have a little look at exclusive golf and travel and look at their story which is what, uh, what, I, um, what a place that is as well Bowood beautiful yeah. isn't it your first time there I've never been there I played the Cornish as a Cornish um, Bowood, Bowood yeah. which is good um, but the one in Wilshire was that was something special yeah, I know really really good we were talking to Ben it's a PJ sort of yeah cup, venue one of only now, three yeah. Glen which, Eagles um, is one Belfry is one and Bowwood is one. Well, that's the only three in the UK. Yeah, it's great or place, England. isn't it? Yeah, Such UK. good facilities, set in a beautiful sort of estate, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful, yeah, stunning. Um, oh, yeah, stunning. lovely, great place. Yeah. So this week on the show, we've done a proper mix of lots of different things. So we've had reviews. Obviously, I did my the Titleist review came out, the Cobrian review. I did my bit of plum bobbing. You know, so there was there's some lots of little things that we've tried to break the channel up with um, over this week. And I just wanted to actually get some feedback from you guys. So if you haven't had a chance to go over and have a little look at some of the reviews that we've done, because maybe those golf clubs aren't kind of what you're looking for, which is absolutely fine. But I would like some feedback on the way in which we've done the reviews. Yeah. Because we've tried to incorporate myself, Lee and Lester into the reviews because it gives a different perspective on what those clubs perform like for different levels of golf as such, or different handicaps or just our eyes looking at those clubs, you know? So yeah. I would like to get some feedback from people, especially you know, regular guys. We're trying to make reviews a bit different as well, not just stood there in the studio in the, going, oh yeah, it's brilliant, or yeah. it's rubbish. Like yeah. trying to give more, a little bit, go a little bit deeper into aren't we? But yeah. obviously we're open to any suggestions or any ideas how we can make Absolutely. those reviews better. Because reviews um, are, if I'm honest, they're a little bit of a flooded market out on, yeah. on YouTube. If you want a review on a product, there's lots out there. Everybody seems to want to do them. And it's not that I don't want to do them because I do enjoy looking at new equipment and yeah. but I, I you know I look at it and think, is it really what people want from us? You know, so I do you know, I do want to get some feedback from you all on that. Yeah. And then this week on the channel coming up, we've got Ashbury. Yeah. It's the first of our Ashbury vlogs. So we went up to Ashbury, which is in Devon. Um, it's a massive site. Stayed there, stayed there a we night. We stayed there we? for yeah. a night, and um, but we played two of the courses when we were up there, and yeah. the first one is going to be coming out this week. Week, is it? Cool. Yeah. So um, that will be fun. It was me, you, Lee, and Wilbur. Wilbur. Yeah. So that will be a fun vlog, and uh, yeah. That's this week. That's this week. Cool. Right, I've got a question for you because you, everyone, everyone ev keeps. Asking, I wanted to hear your questions. Everyone keeps asking questions, and they message me to. We'll get, we'll get to some of them soon. Right, but I've got a question for you. <clears throat> God, you've been, how long have you been thinking about this one? Not very long. Have no. you not? So, people do ask me personally who's the best golfer I've ever played with. So, I'm going to ask you because people want to know who's the best golfer you've played with. Oh. It's a tricky I've question. Actually, do I have to have played with them, or have I caddied and been involved in watching them? No, play. we say played with, so you actually, yeah, actually hit shots with, and then then you can say someone that you've been involved with, because obviously you got the experience of the European Tour. Yeah, so. um, oh, that is such a difficult so, yeah. question because, so when I was at college in America, yep. I played with uh, a chap called Jim Renner. Okay. Who people may not have heard of him, but he he was he was one of he was like literally the top player at yeah. co my college golf. He was playing uh, for Johnson and Wales University, which is down in Miami, and he he went on to get his, his PJ Tour card in America. So he was just so impressive. Like yeah. I, I remember sort of standing watching him hitting balls on the range, and I was like, wow, like mm. you are pretty pretty good, long. Straight, just so. What's he like, up to now? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know he got his card for certainly a season or two. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing now. I've lost touch with lots of those guys out there. But yeah, he was he was probably the most impressive from a ball striker point of view. Yeah. Then, but I also in final qualifying um, a yeah, few yeah, years you had ago, a good one, didn't you? I yeah. played with a chap called Stephen Bowditch. Yeah, he's played the European Tour, hasn't he? Oh, oh, yeah. just like yeah, he's he's he he was that year when I when I went to final qualifying for the Open. He actually was he got through. Obviously, won the won the yeah. qualifying, but he he was he was at, at one stage. He was, I think he was either leading the Open or he was certainly there or thereabouts yeah. in the Open. But he's yeah, a, a Australian guy, just proper bomber. Like, oh. and he's played he played PGA Tour, played yeah. in the PGA Tour for a long time. Um, but yeah, proper bomber, but just quality, yeah. absolute quality. Great golfer. So those those are probably my two, two players yeah. that I've actually played golf with. Yeah. That I would say are are as good, you know, 
as good out there as, as any anybody I've seen. Might better trump you there. Oh, no. oh yeah, but you've 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 played. So I played. Play? So I played with a guy called Bill Longyear. Yeah. So he was at um, Isle of um, Purbeck. Perbeck. So I played in the pro am. The captain of Isle of Purbeck was good mates with my dad. Right. So we went up there. He arranged a pro for us. We just thought we were going up for a pro am, and when we turned up, it was. Uh, Bill Long, Bill so he would have been at the time. He would have been sort of mid fifties, right? So, but this guy, for for some of the younger people or people who don't know who who have heard of him, he led the Open a couple of times. Did he? Yeah, in well, the, I know I know the name, and I remember yeah. you telling me about it when you played with he, him. He time. shot he shot sixty seven round Isle of Purbeck, and what he had the best pro score today. Mm. Um, Made it look easy. Oh my god! Yeah, no bogeys. Like yeah. could have if he'd have come in with. Low 60, I mean 67 was still a hell of a score on that yeah, day because it was yeah. a bit wind up on the top of the hill. Um, it could have easily been in the low 60s, but just like so he made golf look so easy. Yeah. What didn't hit bad shots, you know, his good and bad shots, there was nothing between them. Yeah, yeah. But what a golfer, yeah, more an experience. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite, it's good to play with these guys yeah. and just see what, and, and that's what makes me, you know, make, it doesn't make me laugh, but it makes me giggle a little bit. When lo I get lots of people that ask me, you know, oh, Dan, did you play on tour? And, and yeah. Dan, are you going to go and get your tour card? You're, you're, thinking, you're on there now. I mean, I'm on a tour. <laughs> the I'm on tour. our tour. <laughs> but no, I mean, the level that you have to be at to compete mm. and actually make a living Correct. at that level is just, oh, it's, it's, it's great to see it firsthand. I mean, yeah. I'm lucky to see it firsthand, but it's, um, yeah, when you watch those guys play and then you put me up with them, probably in yeah. that environment, it just, yeah, you'll, you'll, know, you'll see the difference so, so quickly. Right, I've got something to show you. Oh, I've yeah. been ordering things. I've been busy ordering. You know I know you don't, you don't like to... this. I know you don't like this, but I've gone behind your back so, with the orders. So generally what happens <laughs> in, this, in this shop environment, even though I'm shop manager, yeah, Dan, head goes of, and, head of shop. Dan goes and orders loads of stuff, uh, without consult, no consult, no consultation, no consultation at, all. at all. Just order it, and all it turns up, and then I've got to sell it. That's normally what happens. Like, I think you'll like this, okay? And I think you're going to like this as well. Can I be so the judge of that? You could be the judge of that. <laughs> what have you ordered? Okay, you ready? Yep. Wow. Wow. There you go, everybody. Sunday show scrubbers. Happy with that? Lovely. Do you like that? Yeah, Logo's come out well. Oh. Sunday show woolly hats. Hopefully, I'll get one of them for Christmas. So that might be in your, <laughs> might be in your stocking for this year. Sunday show head covers. Yes. What? Do you, I mean, you've been chirping on about this for some time now. Yeah. But Sunday show head covers. Uh, definitely one that people have been asking for, so they have now oh, arrived. One of them on my bag, Are you me? happy with that? That's nice, yeah. yeah. And then I've also got some Sunday show trifold towels. Lovely. Okay? Lovely. So are you happy with that? Brilliant. Have, yeah, I, well done, done, yeah. have, I, have I done well? Best, best bit of purchasing you've done in the last three and a half years. Well, well here. done me. <laughs> so they will be available for everybody to have one. If you want to get part of obviously the show, I know the mugs, we started off with the mugs. They suffered a little bit around the world, didn't they? Yeah. Because it just kept breaking. Yeah, I mean, so, I, even, I didn't set, to be honest, I didn't send any across the pond. I just did them internally in the UK. UK. But even then, they were get even yeah. the amount of packaging and how I was... I, you had more was, bubble wrap. Oh wrap I mean, I was and wrapping, still you were breaking. wrapping yourself in bubble wrap. Yeah. So, yeah, that wasn't the, the best thing we've ever purchased. So anyway, these, I think, for, for people, for Christmas presents and things like that, I just think it's just, people have been asking for stuff like that, so can, we just thought we You can could. still get hold of the mugs, but they're yeah. only going to be available to purchase from the golf shop. So. Yeah, so when you're visiting, you can purchase If you want one, come and see us. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, or? yeah. Well, I mean, we always, we, we try and promote lots of different golf, don't we? Whether it's, um, you know, junior golf, yeah. people trying to play on the tour, you know, senior different golf. Levels, yeah, different, different levels of golf. So we try yeah. to hit every every single aspect that we can. Yeah. So I've got a question which I get quite often to be honest from people looking to sort of progress their journey, young 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 juniors or yeah. you know, people of a certain age. Uh, and I've got this one from Fraser Fraser Anderson, who's from Australia. So I was so it's for hi guys, I'm a two handicapped golfer seeking some advice on the journey to become a tour professional. Would love to hear your thoughts on the best ways to go about it. To become a tour player. Tour player, yeah. Right, okay. Whew, right. Um, if you're looking to get good at golf, start to study strokes gained as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Because strokes gained is definitely going to be something that you're going to want to look at 
to see how it, how your game stands up against in, in that environment, should we say, because there's so yeah. many stats out there with strokes gained about tall players and things like that. So whether you need to download the app, the, the strokes gained app, which is a really, really good app, it's, I think it's quite expensive, but it's obviously it's something that I worked with with Mark. Mark Crossfield had it, so we yeah. were using it for that. Um, Mark Brody book, you can go and get that. that that's going to definitely help you with um, becoming a tall player. Definitely you need to get to a certain length. So off the tee, you need to be hitting it. As Paul's quite rightly said in lots of the videos that we've done, you've got to be out there at 290 through the air, 280 to 290 through the air, and then just putt, putt, <laughs> putt the world off. I be mean, as good at putting as you possibly if can. If I would give any youngster any advice, 16 years old, two handicap, um, great to have ambitions, great to have a target. I would say get as much education done as possible. So whether that would be over in this country, we do GCSEs and A-levels. I basically did both of them. So I didn't want to do A-levels. As soon as I was 16, yeah. I wanted to play golf, wanted to practice. Yeah, so yeah, could, we, yeah. we all did, didn't but we? My parents were like, look, you need to get some a higher backup. education, a backup. which is exactly what I did. So I did A-levels yeah. between 16 and 18, and then they said, right, you can have a year off of play as much Blame. golf as you want. Uh, we'll support you, which they did. Um, didn't quite make good use of it, but I then got a part-time job and well, got a job to fit in around trying to play county golf and trying to play in England stuff, yeah. England events, um, to really test myself. And I would say, for me personally, Get a decent amateur background. Get try and get into your Agreed. regional teams, your county teams, whatever. Um, play as high a level as you can as an amateur. Yeah. Because if you're not competing at a high level amateur as an amateur. Yeah. And that's nationally, internationally, etc. Um, and you're only playing say like I only got to I got to county level, south not quite southwest level. I was never going to be, for me, if I couldn't beat these guys at southwest level, then to compete against yeah. guys on the European tour and. It's just so difficult. Yeah, you need yeah, a yeah. lot of money. That's the other thing. Well, you do need a bit of a backing, but yeah. also, also try and play with as many good golfers as you can. Yeah. So, and and what happens is it raises your game. So I remember playing in a. We, we were down in. I was at college, and there was always money games going on when I was in the states. They seemed to love their money games, but I played in an. I played in a match. I was invited down by one of my college teammates, and he said, "Come and you know, come and play in this. We've got this bit of a money game going on. So come and play." So we went down to went down to Miami. Comes down in Florida. We went down to Miami, and we joined up with this uh, couple of couple of groups. And one of the lads was on. He was on like the Nike tour, which yeah. was kind of like the one below the the, U, the US PJ tour. Yeah. A proper 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 golfer yeah now this golf course was a tough golf course this lad shot like eight or nine under par yeah right the lad on my team shot seven under yeah and i shot like five or six under yeah now if him and i had just gone out and played yeah he we would never have shot those scores no but because we were playing with this guy who was so good uh, it just raised your game, yeah. and we luckily we met, I mean this the ladder in my team he managed to pick up second or third spot so he got I got my money back which was quite good from that situation but you you have to put yourself in that environment yeah. as much as you, as, as you possibly can because they will just literally the better players will drag you through they yeah. will start pulling you through and you'll learn so much all you. I'd say is it's good to have ambitions never give up no absolutely right there's a lot of good Keep golfers going. out there yeah. isn't there and you've absolutely. got to work harder yeah. than them. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that helps. Yeah. Hopefully that helps, but don't give up on it. No, Keep no. striving forward, and um, we wish you all the best. Right. So I've got a question here from Craig. It only says Craig. Um, he lives not that far away. He lives in South Moulton. Um, he's a member. Boy. Yeah. He's 47 years old. Six handicap golfer. That's good. Yeah. Um, play. He he had a break from golf. Right. Um, and now he's got back into it. Uh, six, like I said, six handicapper. He's a, he's been a member of Royal North Devon for a year, and he's really enjoyed his links golf. Yeah. Um, he lives in the between R and D and Tiverton. Okay. So recently he said that I played Tiverton, and he fancied trying a Parkland golf course next season. Would you recommend Tiverton? Is it a good challenge? Well maintained. I spoke with the pro. I was impressed with what he had to say. I, f I would be interested in your thoughts. Yeah. So. Tiverton, yeah, I mean, you and I have played Tiverton a number of I times. I played County Champs there. You just month. recently played. Yeah. So it's a very similar golf course to what we've got here at Torquay, a little parkland kind of course. It's, yeah. it's not a big course, it's just a small little parkland course. Um, 
Great, yeah, it's a, it's a nice golf course. I know obviously Ali up there as well, the, the pro who you probably spoke to, the head pro up there. So there's, it's got a nice vibe when you go there, little members kind of golf club. So it's, um, it's very, very different to a Lynx golf course. So Parkland to Lynx um, is very, very different. Obviously on a Lynx golf course, you've got the elements to deal with. I, I always, you feel like you're being battered and bruised a little bit, but also, there's an, I think there's a good opportunity at Lynx golf courses to get your handicap down mm. because when the wind starts to blow, if you can manage your game in the wind, yeah. um, uh, lots of golfers can't. So the, the, the standard scratch generally from my experience of playing Lynx golf, the, 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 uh, it would go up. Um, if, I, if I was to say, would you like to play Lynx golf courses all the time? I probably would, um, would probably enjoy playing parkland courses, maybe just a little bit over Lynx courses, only just due to the fact, as a regular thing, more like, only just the fact that I don't want to be battered by the elements all the time. I like to play on a golf course where it's a little bit less wind and, yeah. and those sorts of things, which is what you'll get at Tiverton. Yeah, I mean, I, Dan's probably said more or less what I'd say. I mean, that when I played Tiverton, uh, a month ago, George, George's head green, he was there, George, yeah. he, I think he, um, I follow him on Twitter and stuff, the course was in phenomenal condition, like, the greens were as good as anything I've played yeah. on this year, um, it was well presented, like you said, it's, fr it's a friendly golf course, yeah, yeah. It's, a good, it's a good golf course, um, it's not saying it's taking anything away from Royal North Devon, because we know, we know people at Royal North Devon, Mark Evans, the yeah, 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 general yeah. manager, no, it's, it's a it's great a golf course, but they're so track. different, they're so Very different. both quirky and both different. Yeah. Um, winter golf. Winter golf, Lynx is my Lynx is always going to win over that, yeah. because obviously um, as soon as you get, like we've had it out here at the moment, you know, we've had a lot of rain and the golf course, it, it needs a bit of rest. But, but sometimes a change is good, and even if you went there for say a year, just to, to you know, I don't think there'd be any harm in playing for a year. You'd be playing with probably different people. You'd, you know, you'd go there as probably relatively unknown. You'd meet new people, new mm. friends. I mean, I think know, if I, it's on your, I think if it's on your mind, do it. Experience, yeah. go I mean, and experience what, what, what it. You know, you might, happen, you, you might, might not yeah. enjoy it. You might not enjoy you can it. You go back to Vaughan off Devon. The yeah. Golf clubs are never not going to take you back, are they? Well, you know, you know. I mean, I've, um, I've done the same thing. I've gone from Cherson to Torquay over the last sort of ten years as being an amateur. Depending on when my dad's playing, if he was playing a lot, I'd go over there and play. Um, like a boomerang, aren't you? Just well, I know. To back. be honest, I've be, probably been only had two years over there. I've had eight years at Torquay. Torquay yeah. um, but I live in Torquay now, so makes sense. But it's yeah. nice to change. You yeah, play yeah, different yeah, people, yeah. And, 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 and for me, I mean, I enjoy play, doing what I do now. I get to yeah. play. You know, I very rarely get to play Torquay. I play it probably twice, three times a year, maybe, which people yeah. would expect more, but. Because of what we do now, it's it's lovely to go and play different yeah. golf courses and experience different golf courses. Would I want to play one of them all the time? No, probably not. No, probably not. I mean, if you've got if you've got the finances, why not? Why not see if you can do a country membership at one or a mm. second club membership? Maybe Don't maybe know. one Depends does that or yeah. even join both of them if yeah. you've got if you you know if you play but, a lot. Of but golf if it's on your mind, I think you probably need to have a little look at it and um, maybe experience it. So I think that's it. Yep. That's lots of questions. There's obviously plenty more questions coming in that Lester's got, and I think we'll probably read through those over time. But if you've got any more questions, please send them in. And like I said before, please keep commenting down below on the videos that we put out, because the more we get back from you, the more we can kind of put into different all, videos. All I'd like to say as well, some of the questions get, we're getting are really complex, and they're not just a discussion, they're more of a... Yeah, a, sort an of, actual video. Yeah, an actual video. So yeah. we will get round to addressing ticking, some of the, ticking, yeah, ticking a few boxes, yeah. but if we're not answering your question, it doesn't mean we're ignoring them, we are reading yeah, them, we are, yeah. some of them are quite, you can't just say, you give your opinion, we need some more evidence, evidence possibly and yeah, shots and up. doing yeah. stuff, so we will get round to them, but um, yeah. yeah. So, for those of you who are, who are in England right now, um, we wish you all the best with lockdown, obviously just stay safe and do all the things that we've been asked to do, and hopefully we can get back playing golf as soon as possible, nobody wants this, so... Um, Let's just try and get through it. And yep. Bernie, stay safe. I will. And yeah. I'll probably see you on the park bench next week. <laughs> see you. See you next week. <laughs>